Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. As many of us sit at home wondering when we will be getting back to work, back to getting a paycheck, back to a normal life, we have to deal with many emotions including stress. If you frequently find yourself feeling frazzled and overwhelmed, it's time to take action to bring your nervous system back into balance. You can protect yourself and improve how you think and feel by learning how to recognize the signs and symptoms of chronic stress and taking steps to reduce its harmful effects. I posted a relaxing meditation video on my blog that helped me and can help you to relax. It is actually a pretty cool video. The digital graphic artist did a great job on this as they go along with the music. I will leave a link in the description for you. The video is called, Above and Beyond Flow State. It helped me to relax quite a bit, and I hope it will help out many of you as well. I recommend getting a set of headphones and find a place where you won't be interrupted for about an hour or so. On that note, let us get started with today's articles pertaining to our investments. First article of interest for today, Iraq, amid Sunni cleavages and Kurdish dictations. Wednesday is an initial date for a vote on the al qazemi government. An Iraqi MP revealed a preliminary date for voting on the government of Prime Minister-designate Mustafa al qazemi The deputy from the Al-Fatah alliance Fadl al-Fatlah we said that al qazemi has completed the selection of his cabinet and he will ask the Speaker of Parliament to hold a session for the Council next Wednesday to vote on the Cabinet. And the Alka's misconsultations with the political blocs ended with the selection of approximately 20 ministers with their replacements, and the candidate booth will be presented to the House of Representatives next Wednesday. However, the Secretary of the Iraqi Communist Party, Riyad Fahmi, ruled that al qazemi could easily pass his booth. Fami said that the support of the blocs to al qazemi will be removed immediately after the understanding of the ministerial quotas. Meanwhile, sources in the Union of Sunni Forces led by Parliament Speaker Mohammad al-Halbousi said that a great schism occurred in the Union and showed that the Iraqi politician and businessman Ka Amis al Anjar succeeded in establishing a new bloc called the Liberated Cities. Bloc was joined by approximately 31 Sunni representatives who broke away from al-Halbousi. For his part, a Shiite deputy accused Shiite blocs of colluding with Kurdish politicians and plundering Iraq's fortunes. Representative Hassan Salem said of the Sadkun bloc linked to Asay Balul al-Haq, led by K. Kazali, that 40% of the Iraqi budget goes to the Kurdish region with the complicity of the leaders of the Shiite blocs. And Salem explained that the Integrity Commission reports that the Kurdish region owes the central government to $128 billion accumulated for the export of 650,000 barrels per day of oil without the Baghdad government obtaining $1 of these revenues. Sources close to al qazemis negotiations with the political blocs indicate that the Kurdish forces imposed on the Prime Minister-designate to keep Fuad Hussein, the Minister of Finance in his post while granting the Kurds three other ministries in exchange for supporting the al qazemi government. Next article of interest. The finance and central bank are studying the option of requesting external loans to cross the stage. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Fuad Hussein held an expanded meeting in the presence of the Governor of the Central Bank, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Finance and General Managers of the Rafa Dane and Rashid and Iraqi Banks for Trade and Customs and Tax Authorities and the Public Debt Department to discuss the economic and financial situation in order to secure the needs of the government. The Finance Ministry statement said that the Minister reviewed the recent OPEC agreement and the decision to reduce the shares of the global oil market and reduce approximately 1 million barrels per day of the share of Iraq and the implications of that decision, especially with the collapse of the current oil prices and how to overcome these obstacles and cross the current stage. On the other hand, Al Alak indicated that the necessity of maintaining the continuity of the banking system and balances, and the need to analyze data to obtain information about these balances, whether they are self-financing or central. It also reviewed the above-mentioned banks. 
The meeting also discussed options for entering the IMF program and requesting external loans as one of the options that the current government can take to cross the stage. The statement went on to discuss the necessity of reviewing the tax exemptions that were granted previously with the exception of organizations and humanitarian agencies whose goods are gifted to the government. Next article of interest, COVID-19, Iraq asks IMF for debt deferment due to coronavirus crisis. The economic and finance advisor to Iraq's prime minister has revealed that talks are taking place with the International Monetary Fund. IMF, for a deferment of the country's foreign debt payments during the coronavirus crisis. Mohammed Saleh told the IMF that the circumstances constitute a force majeure which is afflicting many countries around the world, the state-owned Al Sabah has reported. As one of the founders of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in the 1940s, explained Saleh, Iraq seeks to defer the payment of its debts. The IMF will help Iraq if it agrees to this, or a simplification of procedures, which is possible, but it all needs high-level diplomatic input. According to a spokesman for Iraq's Council of Ministers, al al Fad, while the talks are ongoing and the proposal has been made, the IMF has given no response at the present time, as there are no claims for payment outstanding. He said that when the Iraqi government has a deficit it is approached on a yearly basis by the World Bank which offers it a loan to stabilize its economy. This year, however, there are many things that will be taken into consideration, as the United States has proposed stopping debt repayment at this stage, which is a good thing, especially since Iraq's debts to be paid to the IMF this year are estimated at more than $10 billion, said al -Fad. In the event that there is an agreement, this will benefit Iraq given the current economic and political situation. The burden of paying its foreign debt, added the spokesman, is a strain on Iraq's already fragile economy, as most of the country's wealth is produced by its oil industry due to a lack of economic diversity. The economy of Iraq is unstable, because it depends 95% on oil and the remaining 5% cannot be collected now due to the lack of taxes, fees, etc. Iraq's dependence on its oil industry has already been hit by the recent oil price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia. The coronavirus pandemic and the economic slump it has caused is predicted to be particularly difficult for Middle East countries. In its World Economic Outlook report for 2020 which was released this month, the IMF has predicted that Iraq's economy will decline by 4.7%. Next article of interest. Deputy. All indications confirm that the 2020 budget will turn into austerity budget. The former deputy, Majed Shankali, revealed that all indications confirm that the 2020 budget will turn into an austerity budget. Shankali said in a tweet on Twitter, all economic data confirm that the 2020 budget will turn into an austerity budget, which is a natural procedure under these circumstances. He explained, but what is important in Iraq is to accompany this austerity, to adopt economic reforms, to issue decisions to develop the banking and tax system, to support the private sector, and to support agriculture, industry, tourism and investment. Next article of interest. Digital dollars, paving the way for the future. Money has been inevitable since its inceptions. It is used as a worldwide accepted medium for the exchange of goods or services. Almost anything can be considered as money if it fulfills the three main functions of money, such as store of value, unit of account, and medium of exchange. This particular idea led to the rise of blockchain, cryptocurrencies, a digital method of making payments and storing without the involvement of traditional systems and controls imposed by the government or banks. A closer look, the initial rise of digital dollars right after the global financial crisis is the primary reason for its widespread prominence, as people lost their trust with the banks. Even without a clear identity or physical bank accounts, individuals can conduct transactions using cryptocurrencies. This is useful particularly for a population of 2 billion people without a bank account. 
Due to its low adoption costs and online access, anyone with a smartphone and network connection can store or exchange digital currencies. Such practice threatens the very existence of the central bank and obviates its purpose since it plays a decisive role in monetary policy. This is a major threat to other financial institutions as well, so to gain momentum, central banks introduced CBDC or are better known as central bank digital currencies. The transition towards a cashless future, the driving forces of this complex transition towards cashless transactions vary from one country to another. In Western countries, the primary factor is convenience. This evolution is further supported by the lower transaction costs that make cashless payments more competitive than traditional interests. But there seems to be only a little political interest in this transition. In Asia, India's recent Demonetization Act is aimed at removing money laundering, tax evasion, and corruption, while also aiming to create a sustainable future. Rise of CBDCs, as implied before, the rapid rise of digital dollars coupled with the declined use of fiat cash resulted in the creating of central bank digital currencies. Many financial institutions conduct researches to examine the volatility of these digital cash payments. This helps to alleviate its impact on financial intermediation. Reasons to adapt the primary aim of CBDCs is to improve the efficiency of both retail and large-scale transactions. Even in online and peer-to-peer -peer sales, digital currencies can bring improved efficiency through faster and prolonged settlement hours. It could help to remove the transaction of low-value coins by storing the change in a digital bank account. Through this change, governments can save millions by reducing the production of low-valued coins. The rise of digital dollars further threatens government social welfare programs that are issued using fiat money. The primary aim of private digital money providers which is to maximize public utilization doesn't align well with the current policy. So, it jeopardizes these welfare programs and impacts the benefits delivered to the general public. This may even impair the future solutions aimed for an entire state or country when privately distributed currencies are adopted. The current model for cross-border payments works within the CB infrastructure. The benefits of adapting to CBDCs in these kinds of transactions include 24-hour availability, no counterparty credit risks for participants, and advantages over the existing model. But this model is also susceptible to errors as it has some drawbacks in governance frameworks. Ensuring secure transactions, regardless of it being digital dollars, cryptocurrency, or bitcoins. Ensuring a safe and secure transaction is essential. As the threats posed in the digital cyberspace differ from the conventional dangers involved in cash transfers, traditional protection measures tend to become futile. Even though financial institutions introduce various security schemes, it has no control over the behavior of customers or their devices' protection. Security measures While using credit or debit cards for online transactions, that card becomes vulnerable to online threats. People can subscribe to card protection services, particularly for cross-platform or peer-to-peer -peer transactions. They can also use the virtual credit cards provided by many financial institutions that present added security over physical cards. The rise of the internet made mobile-based transactions a common gimmick. This is why most of these cyber threats are aimed at the mobile devices of unsuspecting consumers. Individuals should avoid routing their devices to protect the inherent protection mechanisms. They can also enable biometric verifications on their mobiles for protection against identity thefts. Such safeguarding measures applies to computers as well. Individuals should follow the prompt update cycles. It is essential to upgrade outdated antivirus and anti-malware software. Such measures are critical to prevent any kind of threat that could expose the volatility of cryptocurrencies. The final abstract, in the past few years, the world has experienced some major changes in making payments or transactions. Digital dollars changed the way low-value coins are deposited in Korea, provided a payment method for millions of people without a bank account in Africa, 
helped to resolve monetary corruption in India and reduced the use of fiat money in Western and European countries. Central banks responded to this sudden seismic shift through their own digital currencies that helps them to retain their decisive role in implementing financial policies. But the benefits offered by digital transactions tend to vary based on the monetary landscape of a country and its existing landscapes. So, it is tedious to pick a definite conclusion to this practice. However, one can effortlessly anticipate that changes and upgrades are apparent. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.